by the looks of it, Zach Levine will finally be making his debut in the playoffs. Ever since he joined the Bulls, not only has he been improving tremendously, he has also joined the record books on several occasions. Levine came to Chicago as a part of the Jimmy Butler trade, which sent the former Bull to Minnesota, which clearly went well. This move left Levine to unlock his full potential with the offense for himself. He has had absurd offensive jumps over the last four years, and it is nothing short of incredible how good he has become. From starting off at 16 points per game, increased to 23, 25, then a career high 27. His usage percentage also deserves to be mentioned. It has been consistently at the top of the league, and the lowest percentage since joining Chicago, it's the 96th percentile. Unfortunately, the Bulls front office have failed to surround him with the necessary talent around him. The franchise has had a playoff drought ever since Levine showed up, but can you really blame him? With the ownership drafting young guys around him, he never got the chance to make the playoffs, let alone a winning record. He has never had someone average 20 points or more beside him until Nikola Vucevic showed up. Being the best player on a troublesome Bulls team these last few years, the team's record with Levine is 102 wins and 199 losses. Each season prior to this year, the team's offense was almost ranked dead last. But look at the bright side, since this will change next year. The Chicago Bulls are one of the teams this offseason who made significant changes to their roster, improving on, quite frankly, almost everything. This not only establishes a win-now culture, but also looking into the future. In short, if I could describe this lineup, they will do their best to simply dunk on everybody. Use of the dribble to on the Jr. gets into the paint, look out below! They pulled off a sign-and-trade for Lonzo Ball worth $85 million for four years, who I believe is a player who can fit into any system as their starting point guard. Although he has his free throw issues over his career, which has improved to 78% last year, he shot 38% from deep, is a good defender, and also an excellent passer. Look at the potential the Bulls have, unloading Lonzo in the corner wide open after opposing teams decide to double Levine or DeRozan if they get going. Lonzo covered in the corner? No worries. Levine or DeRozan can casually do a two-man game with Nikola Vucevic, who just averaged 21 points per game last year. Speaking of DeRozan, they acquired him in a sign-in trade, which will send Thaddeus Young to the Spurs. Although DeRozan can't shoot a three-pointer to save his life at 25%, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt as he rarely attempts them. However, the positives he brings outweighs the negatives. He came into the league as a rookie as a slasher, just trying to dunk on everybody, put everybody on highlights. But over the years as he has matured, so has his game, as he has flourished in the Popovich system in San Antonio. He has now become an all-around threat on the offensive side of the ball. Clearly benefiting from the Spurs' unselfish system, he became a good playmaker, who averaged 7 assists last year, which will help Levine getting more looks. Not only did they sign the GOAT Alex Caruso for $37 million lasting four years, they unloaded Laurie Markkinen, sending him to Cleveland, getting Derrick Jones Jr. from the Blazers in return with two picks. Although some may disagree with Markkinen leaving the Bulls, he is not a good defender and you could tell the Bulls needed to unload him because they struggled at defense last year. But what makes this team really good? They have improved young guys who were already solid in Kobe White and Patrick Williams. What helps is that Zach Levine will also get more help on the offensive side as he averaged 27 points per game last year. What they needed clearly was defense on the guard position, so they improved that by getting Lonzo and Caruso as an excellent defensive guard tandem. The offensive firepower for this team on paper is staggering. Last year, three of the starters for the new Bulls lineup averaged over 20 points per game last year. It's all about how they will mesh together. A big question will be expectations. It's going to be the first year of the newly found Bulls team. It may start with some slip-ups, but over time, if everybody plays to their strengths and get the freedom to play their game, they will be a problem to face. Although their team is nicer than before, is it good enough to beat some of the top teams in the East in a seven-game series? Fuck no, baby! <laughs> The Eastern Conference has some stacked teams, with Philadelphia, Milwaukee, Brooklyn, Miami, and Atlanta, who can all contend for a spot in the finals. But if there is one thing with underdog teams making it to the playoffs, simply never count them out. 